What you got for us, Claymore? You need to report to the lieutenant. What for? I don't know. It's real important, though. Hood wants to see you. Oh, Lord. This could be very good or very bad. I wouldn't keep him waiting. Gentlemen, I'm sure that when you heard that I wanted to see you, you probably thought that you'd done something wrong. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Oh, for months. Ooh. Be assured the answer to that is no. You haven't done anything wrong. All through this war, I have relied on advisors to give me advice. Some of the advisors have been Confederate officers. Some of them have been politicians. Some of the advice has been good. Most of it not. Some of it's as useless as a wooden fry pan. Well, begging and generous pardon, but... No, no, no. None of that with us here. This is a conversation between you three and me. Well, most of your advisors have never been in the field. You're absolutely right. When it comes to the politicians, no. That's the reason you're here, is that I want to talk with people who have been on the front lines. Um, so what can we help you with, sir? So while we still have control over Atlanta, we're just about to execute a plan to totally destroy a munitions train. Munitions? You mean, you mean Yank munitions? No, unfortunately. This is our munitions. And let me explain this. We can't move the train because the tracks are destroyed around. It. And I don't want what's on that munitions train falling into enemy hands where that can be used against us. So you want us to blow up the train? No, that would be essentially a suicide mission. I've got demolition experts that are gonna do that for us. What I need you three for is what comes next. And what might that be? Atlanta has a substantial warehouse district. They've got hundreds of businesses, stores, uh, brokers, warehouses. Are any of you familiar with this district? I used to work there, sir, before the war. As soon as the Federals take control of Atlanta and they move in, I'm gonna provide you three with Federal uniforms. So you want us to be spies? I've never liked that term, spies. I prefer the term information seekers. Sounds dangerous. Not so much. You're not to engage the enemy in any way, shape, or form. I want you to take stock of what's in those businesses and warehouses with particular interest as to what could be used by Sherman's army, especially when he's on the move. So what do you want us to do right now? The Yankees have already started shelling that land. It's scattered right now. But if they follow suit with every other siege during this war, that's only going to intensify. So we're going to have to give up the city. There's not a thing we can do about that right now. We don't have the men or the resources to prevent it. When the Federals realize that, that there's no significant resistance, they'll move in. And that's when you need us to go in? Correct.
Good afternoon, Mrs. Andrews. Good afternoon, Mr. Andrews. What's the news from the district? We lost another customer today. Mr. Woodridge vacated his space. He's moving to Macon. I don't know what good he thinks that will do in the long run. Is he taking those two old carriages? He is. I didn't even know those wheels could still roll. What's he hauling those old crates with? We found a couple of old mules somewhere. You better watch out for the soldiers. They'll snatch them quick. Maybe not, James. You know our boys are marching out. The Yanks could invade the city any day now. When they do, there won't be anything to hold them back. It's just a matter of time, Charlotte. I'm sure they're aware of our troop movements. And when that day comes, it will be a completely different world. It will. But it might be something that we can handle. I wish your pa would get himself home. It ain't safe for anybody to be outside at night anymore. Did he say what time he could be expected? He didn't say. He's hunting for news about the battle. Eli, what are you doing with one of your father's guns? Put that down. Pa says it's mine now. It ain't loaded or nothing. He said it was yours to keep. Yeah, he did. Well, he didn't tell me anything about it. Put that away right now. Can I have one? What's a boy your age want with a gun? Pa said if anything happens to him, I'm the man in the house. At least I know how to shoot. Oh, Lord. Pa. It's about time. We've been worried sick about you. You all right, John? The engagement south of town did not go well for our side. You mean the Yankees won? For now, yeah. Are they headed this way? Not just yet. Well, what do you think they're doing? Regrouping, I'd imagine. That won't take long. What happens after they regroup? Whatever Sherman decides. Oh, they'll come here. He's got to take Atlanta. Think it's thunder, Paul? I don't know. It's cannon fire. Don't you go scaring your brother now, Olivia. She ain't scaring me. Get away from the window, Eli. You've not been excused from the table. Get away from the window, Eli.
What in God's name are they shooting at? Sounds like they're everywhere. Are they attacking? Maybe not. Maybe they're just trying to scare us. But they're doing a good job. Send it. Thank heaven. What was the point of this? I know our troops have left the city. It's terror. Pure and simple. They're letting people and politicians of Atlanta know they hold the cards. James, how difficult would it be to arrange a meeting with the Federal Command? I think the key person to have involved will be Mayor Calhoun. If you want, tomorrow morning we can sit down and write him a letter. That is a fine idea. How's your leg feeling? This piece of wood they gave me as a replacement? Don't feel like anything, really. But when I try to walk on it, Pain. It grips my brain like a vice. James, please keep trying. It will get easier. You will walk again. Hannifer, it, it hit the house. I think my dog ran away, Grandma. We'll find Chester in the morning. Is it okay if me and Joshua stay here for a little while? Of course it's all right. You don't even have to ask. Got my gun case and gangs try to get in. You put that away now, Eli. Are you alright, Grandmother? I'm just tired, Olivia. The 
Let's get you to bed. You need to rest. So you three are in possession of federal uniforms. Yes, we are. Well, I'm sure you know that all of our troops have been withdrawn from the city. We heard about the munitions train. I heard that was a sight when it was going up. The important thing is that Sherman has been denied use of all the munitions that were on that train. So now we go in. Gentlemen, if I didn't make this clear beforehand, I want you to know this is not an order. This is strictly voluntary. But you think it's important. I want to know what's in those warehouses. This mission is a bit dangerous and tricky. If anybody wants to back out of this, I need to know now. We're in. Sergeant Major, I don't think I can get used to wearing all this blue. Don't get too comfortable. If any Yanks show up, don't talk to them. That's right. Just salute and walk on by. What do you want us to do, Sergeant Major? We need to find out exactly what's in these buildings. Gentlemen, how may I help you? Are you Mrs. Andrews? I am. You own this place? Yes, with my husband, Captain James Andrews. And where might he be? He was severely wounded at Vicksburg and is now an invalid. I oversee the warehouse on his behalf. Can we take a look inside, ma'am? There's very little left. Most of our clients have removed their goods. But I would be happy to show you what remains. Thank you, ma'am. Y'all know what this used to be? Yeah. My boys took all the horses. No tack, nothing. Pitiful, pitiful. Mm. What you think? Not even good for a farm. This stuff can't even be repaired. All right, let's go. What used to be here? A big pile of something. There's cotton seed, boys. I don't see no cotton now. The lady told us most of the stuff would be cleared out. Mm hmm. Miss? Gentlemen? This here place yours? I helped my mom and pa run it. Is there something in particular you men are looking for? We're looking for a lot. 
We need goods to support our army. What exactly do you need? It's probably best we look at what you have. Well, the need come talk to my mom and pa. Yeah, now this is better quality goods. You must still be doing business. You think they're taking federal money? Not a lot of people have it. They must be doing a lot of trading. You think that weapon works? I would think so. You think? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, it'll work. Hello, sergeants, corporal. When did you gentlemen become purchasing agents for General Sherman's army? Orders is to find out what you might have that an army might need. Well, I've built a sizable business in the last four years, working almost exclusively with the military. Which military? Well, both. I don't play favorites. Now, the vast majority of my transactions with the Army of the North have been with a Colonel Peabody. Are you familiar with him? Come now. Colonel Peabody is General Sherman's quartermaster. Fully half of the goods in this warehouse were requested by him. Who do you report to? Captain Doolittle. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Doolittle. However, I will speak to Colonel Peabody, and if he approves the transaction, I'd be happy to accommodate you gentlemen. How long is that going to take? Come back and see me in a couple of days, if you don't mind. We will be back. I saw you listening in over there, Mrs. Andrews. There's something you want to talk to me about? Mr. Parker, I have kept my silence about your treasonous transactions for far too long. Ma'am, the war here in Atlanta is pretty near over. I'm sure you're aware of that. But there will be a life after this war, and I plan on living that life. Yes, you've done well in this war, unlike the other men. You know my husband paid a terrible price at Vicksburg. But at least he has his faculties. He's slowly learning to walk again on his wooden limb. He's lucky compared to some of the others. Some have come back in caskets. Some have come back in baskets, and I think that may be even worse. No limbs at all, and their spirits are broken. Do you know people have taken to calling them basket cases? You know there are some who haven't come back at all. We hope and pray that somehow, some way, they may find their way home. But we know that they may be in some foul federal prison somewhere, sick or starving, or maybe lying dead in a place where no one knows their name. You. You're a merchant, not a soldier. I am well aware of their suffering, Mrs. Andrews, and yes, I have made a profit on my trades with the Federals. But not every month, and on some months, not at all. Do you know why those months were lean, Mrs. Andrews? We are at war. Most of what I have acquired from the Federals is in the form of medical supplies. Badly needed medical supplies that I donated to our hospitals. Why would someone like you do that? Because like your husband, I believed in the cause. But this Federal Colonel, this Colonel Peabody, became a fine source of laudanum. 
And with that laudanum, I was able to ease the suffering of thousands of our boys. So is that the reason you would sell to these men? Yes. From these men, I would take federal currency, U.S. currency. Or I will trade for medical supplies that we need. Thank you. Good to see you again, Mr. Parker. I trust you will be able to obtain the items on my list. Most of them. Don't tell me you're losing your mind as such in these matters. Can you please explain? Colonel, your requests are always a challenge. Well, yes, if they were easily obtained, we would not require your services. Oh, understood. Now, we've been doing business a good long while, but up until now, the most difficult item to procure has been General Sherman's elixir. Yes, he does love his apple brandy. So now the most difficult items to procure are? Let me guess, the garments for General Kilpatrick's lady friends. You are correct, Colonel. Not just lingerie, but French lingerie. From France. Yes, yes, yes. Please understand, in order to procure these items, I will have to deal with blockade runners. Well, I certainly can't deal with them. Yeah, yes, but a blockade runner can be a very interesting individual. I've heard. What about the other items on the list? I have them. Thank you. I will send a wagon around later this evening to collect them. Um... You wouldn't be working with a pair of federal sergeants, would you? No. Why do you ask? Sergeants from your army were at the warehouse today. They told me they wanted to inventory my goods, and they said they were following orders from an officer by the name of Doolittle. I am not familiar with an officer by that name. Oddly enough, they weren't familiar with you, which I found to be a little peculiar. Yes. Did you allow them to inventory your goods? I did not. Best to continue that course of action. Oh my, my. Look at you all gussied up. Are you planning on going somewhere? Well, just wanted to make sure these old clothes still fit. I got a response from the mayor. He set up a meeting for tomorrow with a general and a colonel from Sherman's staff, and he has someone to be the representative of the residential district. And he's asked me to be the representative of the warehouse district. James. That is truly excellent news, but please let me be the representative for our district. James, how is the mayor planning on getting there? Carriage. You cannot walk a step without considerable assistance. You could seriously injure yourself getting in and out of a carriage. All right, all right. Sorry, Charlotte. I just, I feel so helpless not being able to do something. I'm sure you'll be a fine representative for the district. And I know you can handle the meeting just as well as I could. The mayor will be expecting me, but I'm sure you'll understand. I know he will. We need this meeting. There was an incident at the warehouse today. How so? 
three Yanks came to see us. Us, so not specifically you or me. Us, as in the district. They wanted to see what was in the warehouses that could be useful to their army. They were inspecting all the businesses. Officers? Sergeants. I don't know who sent them. Yeah. I'm sure they didn't really find anything in our place. No, I told them everything had already been removed, but they wanted to see for themselves. I let them look. You did the right thing. Times like these, I think it would be unwise to be contradictory. Good afternoon. I am Colonel Peabody. And with me is General Kilpatrick. Please introduce yourselves. I am the mayor of Atlanta, James Calhoun. I am Elizabeth Davidson. I am representing the residential district. I am Mrs. Andrews. I represent the warehouse district. Please state the nature of your visit. We want your cans to stop firing on our homes for no reason. There's ample reason, Mrs. Davidson. The cessation of aggressive activity depends upon your acceptance of our terms. Then we need to negotiate. There will be no negotiations. Then please tell us how to prevent future attacks on our city. Very simply, there is to be no further resistance. Any structure harboring rebel interest or thought to be harboring rebel interest will be destroyed. No exceptions. Can you be more specific? You must cease any and all activities that would impede the advancement or operation of the Army of the United States. But my daughter and her son weren't doing anything to impede the operations of your Army. They weren't doing anything, and their house got blown up by your cannons. The threat of force without the use of force is worthless. What happened was a brutal and unprovoked attack. You haven't seen anything yet, lady. Gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, we do not need anyone to take an adversarial position. I second that. We are here to create and preserve the peace. Thank you, Colonel. General Kilpatrick, uh, if you don't mind me saying, you sound like you're from around here. Is that the case? No, it's not. I'm from Kentucky, a fine state that never slid into the cesspool with the rest of you, secesh. Miss Andrews, you said that you represented the Warehouse District. That is correct. Are you familiar with Mr. C.W. Parker? I am familiar with Mr. Parker. Well, I'm surprised he's not here today. Mr. Parker is very business-minded. He is not so much civic-minded. I am aware that he has had transactions with your army. Yet you have not. Do you accept U.S. currency, Mrs. Andrews? I have chosen not to. That is harboring rebel sentiment. This can be seen as an impediment to our operations here. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we can work this out. But gentlemen, what is it that we can do to further an end to this siege? What can we do for you? What is most important to you right now, General? Well, finding adequate quarters for our officers would be a good start. I, I believe we can help you with that. Many of our residents have left the area, and there are a number of fine homes that are empty now. Well, not as many now since the cannon fire. Understood, Mrs. Davidson. But you do understand that if you are quartering a U.S. officer, your home will be protected by the United States Army. Would we be able to choose which officers? That would not be possible. Sir, we've taken a look at most of those buildings in that district. And so what you're telling me is there's a whole range of stockpiles in these buildings. About half the buildings are empty or nearly empty. Most of the mercantiles are still stocked. And then there's the brokers. Explain brokers. They've been dealing with the Yanks for a while. Really? Very interesting. Some of them are out in the open taking federal money. And they won't show us what's in their buildings. Gentlemen, this is, this is sort of a chess game. We need to know what Sherman's plans are 
before we can make our next move. Until we know that, we've got another pressing issue that demands our attention. We're all Calvary, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have any of you heard about a Yankee blowhard named George Stoneman? Stoneman's Raiders? That's right. Mr. Stoneman's had a bit of a misstep on his last raid. Y'all cut him off, didn't you? You better believe it. He was running the line straight down to Macon. I imagine he was going to try to tear the place up like they did in Atlanta. So what happened? He underestimated our cavalry, our strategy, and our resolve. And as a result, he got himself captured. And so I'm happy to tell you, right now, Mr. Stoneman is a prisoner of war in our possession. Good. His cavalry units are still in the field, and they're scattered, but still active. Sounds like an opportunity. Yep. I'd like for us to mop that mess up. You want a part in it?
What do you mean you're not going to leave? This is where I live. This is where I've lived my entire life. But, Mama, we've talked about leaving. Mama Rivers, both John and Olivia heard what those soldiers said. Well, you've talked about leaving before and you never did. Oh, it'll pass over. Mama, they're going to burn us out. Amelia, maybe you can convince her. Remember Mama Rivers? Remember when we talked about staying with my sister in Milledgeville? Milledgeville? That's a hundred miles from here. Even if we made the trip, your sister doesn't have enough room for all of us. Besides, those blue coats move fast. If they can burn us down in here, they can burn us down there, just the same. Then we'll find another place. Then we'd be refugees. Maybe Mrs. Andrews can take us in. She has a big house. Mrs. Andrews? I ain't taking charity from her. This is my home. Mama Rivers, home is not a place. It's where your family is. Can I talk to her? Maybe she can help. It's scary, isn't it? I ain't scared for me. I've lived my life. But I'm frightened to death for my youngins, you and Eli. You know, I always wanted you to take over the store. You have a good head for business. But now, you ain't got nothing. That don't matter now. All that matters is that we get through this together. Those men are going to come back tomorrow. And they're going to do what they said they were going to do. We don't have a choice, Grandmother. This don't make no sense. What don't make no sense? All oh, this struggle, this fighting and dying, what for? It's all men's business. I think you're right about that. All they had to do was listen to us ladies. It didn't have to come to this. We could have worked it out. But we have to survive this war. I personally don't think it can last much longer. It don't matter none. There'll just be another war. You give these men a little free time and they'll find a reason to start another war. We're fighting a war now and your grandfather fought a different war and my grandfather fought a different war from that one. That's what don't make no sense. I can't lose you. 
but I'd just slow you down, Olivia. I ain't up for no kind of trip. Please come with us. I need you with me. <sighs> well, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Go back where you came from, Yankees. Colonel Peabody, pleased to meet you again. Likewise. Come on in. Are these all the occupants of the household? Yes. My daughter Juliana and her son Joshua, and my daughter Mary. And where are all the men? Well, sir, my husband passed away before the war. My condolences. My husband is in the fight, but we haven't heard from him in over a year. My daughter Mary isn't married. Would you mind telling me if you are currently involved in a courtship? Not at the moment. All the men are gone. The purpose of my visit is to inspect these houses for future quartering of U.S. Army officers. Yes, we discussed this at the meeting. Your place is adequate, but it is not palatial. Thank you, I think. If it were palatial, General Sherman would want it for himself. That wouldn't be good? Well, most of his staff, myself included, would be lodged here. You would have to find someplace else at least until we moved out. Oh dear. That is not the case, so no worries. I believe this house would be adequate for General Kilpatrick. That was the general at the meeting? That is correct. I didn't care for him. You are not alone in that sentiment. Anything else I should know about this general? Yes, uh, two things. First, his entourage. Is it a large group? Well, not particularly. It's just that they're all women. They're not fallen women, are they? No, but they are very, very close friends of the general. I see. You did say two things. Yes. I would suggest you have a word with your grandson. I don't think playing Kill the Yankee games is prudent under the circumstances. Joshua? He's just a boy. Mrs. Davidson, they see every male, regardless of age, as a possible threat. Gentlemen, I do have other information seekers employed. And here's what they've learned. Sherman is gathering troops and supplies and plans to move through Georgia to the sea by way of Savannah. Essentially, what this will do is divide the South in halves. Do you know when, sir? Probably the second or third week of next month. It may change. Even more immediate 
Sherman has given orders to his men to burn any and all governmental buildings in Atlanta with this taking place the day after tomorrow. What about the goods in the warehouse district? The Yankees will take everything they can get their hands on in preparation of this upcoming march. Well, sir, what do you want us to do? Gentlemen, we need to burn all of the goods in the warehouse district. If we don't do that, those goods are going to be used to fuel Sherman's army in his movement southward. But the warehouse district, these, these are our people. I don't want any of those people to be harmed. Your assignment is to give all of those folks a 24-hour notice that the following day, all that's going to be burned to the ground. This is very important. I want this to be done the same day that the Yankees burned the government buildings in Atlanta. Because I want the people of Atlanta to think that Sherman did it. He's going to anyway. This has got to be done. If you don't want to do it, I'll find some people who will do it. General, we'll take care of it. Miss Rivers, Mrs. Andrews, I have bad news for you. We have orders to burn the contents of these buildings. You intend to burn yeah. our buildings? You have until tomorrow evening, 24 hours from now. But we live here. Fetch your father, Olivia. Why would you burn our warehouses? You have 24 hours to pack your personals and go. And how might we evacuate? We cannot travel by rail because all the trains are demolished. We cannot travel by carriage because the armies have taken all our horses and mules. Well walk then. Stay on the side roads. My husband cannot walk, and I will not leave him. I will take whatever I can carry back to the house. You're not Yanks, are you, fellas? I spoke to Colonel Peabody, and he never heard of Captain Doolittle. How about we go down a couple blocks? I could introduce you to that nice big batch of blue coats that are camped out down there. I wouldn't suggest doing that. What's this my daughter's telling me about y'all burning the place? John, they're giving us 24 hours to evacuate. Evacuate? We've lived here for 30 years. Why would you need to burn anything? Your army's already taken the city. Not their army. What kind of nonsense is this? Y'all ain't burning nothing. We could burn it all right now, but we're giving you a chance. My grandmother lives upstairs. She ain't leaving. She ain't going nowhere. So I have to go. Folks around here already been through too much hardship. This, this ain't right. What are you doing with that, Charlotte? It's over, James. Those three Yanks came back. They gave us 24 hours. Tomorrow night they burn everything. What? Why? No explanation, not from these men. They're following orders. You know how soldiers are. I brought back the ledger. I'm going back tomorrow for a few small items. Figured it would be a good idea to have some record of all that we've lost. It's all happening so fast. What do you mean? I've barely been back a year. Everything is falling apart. Our government, our army, our whole society. It's that damned war. 
They told us it would only last a few months and that we'd win. You know, I know what the problem was. I know. And what was that? We were spread too thin. Don't you see? The same weekend, I had my leg blown off in Vicksburg. We're waging a big battle up in Gettysburg. Everyone believed in the cause then. We were on top of the world. I mean, the army, we thought we were going to march right up to the gates of New York. And then they wouldn't have any choice but to negotiate terms. But we lost, James. What we had is all gone. I am still thankful. For what? Because my husband, the only man I have ever loved, came back to me. I am one of the lucky ones. I received your message, Mr. Parker. What is the emergency? Those federal sergeants came back today. They gave everyone in the warehouse district 24-hour notice. 24-hour notice? For what? They said they have orders to burn all of the buildings in the district tomorrow. Where did these orders come from? I, I don't know. Maybe this Captain Doolittle that doesn't exist. I will look into this as soon as possible. Are, are these orders legitimate? I don't think so. Uh, Mr. Parker, I don't mean to sound superficial, but did you look into the garments that I requested? I did. They're in a bundle at my warehouse. A very expensive bundle. You will be reimbursed and handsomely. You know this. But I need the items removed from your warehouse immediately. I will. Shall we meet here the day after tomorrow? That is doable, but please place the items in a discreet container. Certainly. One last request. My supply of laudanum is exhausted. You will be compensated for the garments, and I will have the laudanum. Mr. Peabody, you have always been a very fair man to deal with. I am a Quaker. I know no other way. Thank you. There, Mama. Sergeant May. 
major, because we had 24 hours before they were burning it. Don't tell the Federals if you want to tell the Federals anything. I don't know about you, but I didn't have enough to worry about. There's nothing else we can do. I'm going to call. No, I hate deceiving my family. But I can't leave my home. I grew up here, learning the trade with Paul. And then, my husband and I were blessed to run it for 30 years. John and Amelia made me so happy when they kept it going. And then it was supposed to go to Olivia. I know what I'm planning to do. I ain't asking for any forgiveness for myself. But God, please watch over my family. And send those blue devils back to the hell they came from.
Gentlemen, you executed your mission to perfection and with perfect timing. And for that, I thank you. If you don't mind me asking, sir, what's next? Let me ask you, what would you think our next move would be? Go chasing after Sherman and stop him if we can. Nope. I'm headed north back into Tennessee. I'm going to make it known far and wide that we're going into Ohio. Why? Are you headed for Ohio? I'm going to go as far north as possible. The goal is to draw Sherman away from his intended march. But Sherman's heading south. I understand, but I'm headed north. This is going to be our Tennessee campaign. What we want to do is interrupt Sherman's march southward and divert him to where he's going to try to stop us from going to Ohio. This will be completely unexpected. Mark my word.
Thank you.